us for week number three of the Destiny Group Mentor School at Say Reality. And I'm excited. We're going to start off, as you know, uh, here in week number three. Uh, tonight, I'm going to share with you about the protocol of kingdom purpose and vision. Uh, God actually has revealed in his word uh, his kingdom protocol for your purpose and vision. But I want to start each week with about five minutes of my wife, Liz, teaching on what she's calling Kingdom Reign, kind of a warm up and kind of help you to get into what we're going to talk about tonight. So let's welcome Dr. Liz Kendall. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the two things I want to emphasize tonight is environment and atmosphere. We, as ambassadors of heaven, bring the atmosphere. Amen. That's why Jesus I have, said, I have to go, mm -hmm. so that he can come into us through Amen. the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we set the atmosphere wherever we go. I, I'm hoping that we do that. Amen. Amen. Just remember that, how powerful the atmosphere of heaven is. So I want you to jot down Genesis, and I'm going to start on the third day. We know that God made the heavens, created the heavens and the earth. But I'm going to just for the atmosphere and environmental purposes, I'm going to start on Genesis 1, 11 to 13. And that's when he did the herbs, the plants. You know, he was preparing the environment Amen. for the creatures, Amen. for the animals and for us. And then Genesis 1, 14 to 19, he created the lights. This is the fourth day. Amen. The lights up there, the sun the moon, the stars. These revolve around the earth. They are for the earth. They are created for us. Uh, signs and also so that we can mark the days and the nights and, and the calendar. Mm -hmm. God started way back then with the calendar. This is God's calendar, mm -hmm. right? So we won't get into much into that, but that's also a part of created an, an, an environment for men. He brought the atmosphere of heaven. Now he's creating the plants, the sun. They knew the plants are gonna need the sun, right? So he created the sun and all that is up there in the heavens, in the firmament. He lives in the heavens. These lights are in the firmament. Now, uh, day five, he created um, all the creatures. Mm -hmm. The creatures in the water. Actually, the he knows that the creatures in the water, like fish and all those, are created to live in the water. Mm -hmm. So, and he told them also to um, to multiply, mm -hmm. right? To procreate, be fruitful, and to multiply. And that's the fifth day in that's Genesis one twenty through twenty four. Now the sixth day, he created Adam, he created the animals, an all creeping thing, and he created Adam and Eve on the sixth day. And then on the seventh, we know that he rested. Mm -hmm. So this is what I want to leave with you. Kingdom reigns on earth through us. We are the ones that bring God's kingdom reign on earth. We are the, the ones that bring the atmosphere of heaven to earth and we can change our environment. Tonight I want to talk to you about the protocol of purpose and vision. And we bring everything, as we say, from the kingdom perspective. And you know, being uh, talking about the kingdom perspective, that doesn't mean we just say kingdom all the time. You know, uh, I've been at places where they said it was a kingdom event, but I didn't hear much kingdom. So, you know, we really need to understand that the kingdom of God is deep. It's very multi-layered. And so the things we're going to be talking about are from a kingdom perspective. Amen. So let's start right here. Last week, you know, we did an overview of God's kingdom. It was very much an overview to kind of set the foundation. And we talked about our purpose is who we are. Amen. And vision is why we are. A lot of people 
call their vision what they want to do. Mm -hmm. But as we discussed last week, vision is not what you want to do. It's why you want to do it. And purpose is who you are. I meet a lot of ministers because I do a lot of uh, mentoring and counseling with emerging as well as seasoned leaders. I'm honored to do that. But I hear oftentimes they burn out. And the reason why they burn out is not really because of ministry. It's because they went at doing something, copying someone else, or trying really hard to make something happen before they really found out who they are. Amen. So finding out who you are isn't instantaneous. It's a process. I'm still getting acquainted with me. How about you? I'm still finding out who I am in him. And it's not about selfishness. It's not about uh, a self-centered life. It's about knowing who you are in him to be effective in helping others. There's something we need to understand about kingdom culture when we talk about protocol. We're going to define protocol. Kingdom culture, now I want you to grasp this. Kingdom culture is set, established, and activated from a prophetic future. Kingdom culture, it's there at the top of your sheet if that helps. <laughs> Kingdom culture is set, established, and activated from a prophetic future. This is why it says in Romans 4.17, we call those things that be not as though they were. Because the kingdom of God is cultivating forward into what he's already called done, but hasn't manifested yet. <laughs> now, earthly cultures, earthly kingdoms are set, established, and activated from a historical past. Isn't that something? When man transgressed, when Adam transgressed, he set things going backwards. God is all about going forward. Amen? Amen. A curse is backwards. Mm -hmm. A blessing is forward. forward. Amen. Amen. So the kingdom is not set from a historical past. Mm -hmm. no. The kingdom is set prophetically in what God has already called done. So, mm -hmm. I want you to get this because that's how sure your purpose is. God isn't doing this as he goes along. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. He, he actually, I think I put it there somewhere in your sheet, he constituted you before he instituted you. Wow. Wow. Earthly kingdoms are established and set and activated from a historical past. Hmm. This is why cultures clash. Cultures were cultivated from a past. Y'all getting that? Yes. How about you online? This is so important to understand. The reason why the world is in trouble is because of their history. God's idea of a hist of history is a mystery. God's idea. God's idea of history is a mystery. We'll get into some of that in the weeks to come. In other words, God is unfolding a culture that he already established. Oh, come on, somebody. Amen. And now we are just walking into it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
This is why no matter what our culture has been on the earth, we relate as kingdom citizens because we are one nation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so important. The world is in trouble because of their history. We are yeah. secure because of a mystery. It's the mystery of the gospel being unfolded. Yes, thank you. Yes. So I'm just finding out what my culture in the kingdom has always been. Yes, thank you. I'm getting acquainted with who I really am. <coughs> now this is important because everything about your life is a seed. Not a weed. <laughs> Everything about the kingdom has a prophetic memory. A seed has a prophetic yes. memory. You say, what are you talking about? That's just too deep for... No, 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 no. A seed has a prophetic memory. God designed it that way. In other words, an apple doesn't try, have to try real hard not to become an orange. But an apple in the seed form was designed to what it would become before it was. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we don't have to try real hard mm -hmm. to be something that we're not. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have to try real hard to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you just simply need to be obedient. I need to be obedient to what God says I already am. Yes. Yes. That's my DNA. <laughs> That's my blueprint. Amen? So a seed has a prophetic memory and immediately makes a demand on the ground to make room for its purpose. <laughs> See, as the kingdom of God manifests closer and closer in the days and times that we're in, has anybody noticed that the ground is shaking? Because the seed is no longer just in seed form, we are sprouting. Yes, amen. Yes. And the seed makes a demand on the ground to expand. That's why not everybody likes you. Because you challenge them just by walking in the room. Have you noticed? Honestly, when I got in the ministry years ago, I thought everybody was going to love me. I, that's how naive I was, I guess. Anybody feel that way? I we thought, oh, I'm going to be in a family. <laughs> Man, you got to watch some of them daggers in the family. Because sometimes there's intimidation. Sometimes there's all kinds of manner of things. And sheep bite you when you're pastors. <laughs> and so, you know, you go through all this kind of thing. But God has a prophetic destiny that is blueprinted to his kingdom advance. We're not here for us, but yet we're blessed when we're in his will. Now, let's look at this. The process, this process, are y'all good? Yes. This process is cultivated through God's governmental protocol. And I said I'm going to define protocol to you. The word protocol, and if you have this sheet downloaded online, you can look. Protocol is derived from the Greek words pro, everybody say pro, pro, meaning towards, and protos, order. And pro copto, meaning to profit or advance, process, and proceed. It also comes from the word protocolon. So the protocol in the Greek is Pro, protos, prokopto, meaning to pro, pro order, profit, advance, process, proceed, and process through. Amen. Amen. You and I tonight are in God's order. He is ordering himself through you. Amen. The church is God's embassy 
to colonize the world. So we are a colony of colonizers. <laughs> Amen. Yes. We're not supposed to just be one denomination or two. We're supposed to be the kingdom of God expressed in many parts. We need each other. Yes. So protocol is important. And the something God gave me a few years ago to remember the word protocol is simply the pro through to his call. Oh, cool. <laughs> Amen. How do I find out what God's will is? I mean, we used to, when I was in the teenage group years ago, years and years and years ago, I remember we would always be at the altar saying, God, what is your will for my life? Anybody remember those days? Oh, what is your will for my life? And I pre he's probably saying, please stop shouting. It's in my word. <laughs> it, it's literally, God has outlined how to discover your purpose. His will. So, let's go on. If you ever notice, it says in Psalm 37 and 23, the steps of a good man yes. are ordered by the Lord. The biblical word for protocol is order. Order. Mm. That's why the That's devil awesome. wants to get you out of order. Yes. So you'll come short mm -hmm. of your purpose. Mm -hmm. Do you know what sin is? Besides, we always have these things in our head. And yeah, doing bad things is sinful. But do you know what sin really is? In the Greek, it's defined as just coming short. Just coming short of what you could have had. So the enemy is not out to try to give you pleasures and now you've got to suffer. But the enemy is out to make you suffer by making you think you're having pleasure. He does that by causing you to think grabbing something and getting it quick will satisfy you when really all it does is cause you to come short of the real thing. Hmm. Wow. Huh. So the steps, have you noticed it didn't say the leaps? <laughs> It's never a leap of faith. No, no. Faith is steps. Yeah, wow. Steps. The steps of a good man are protocoled by God. Good, if you want to write this down, some of you have heard me say this in my class down in Lake Worth, but good means complete. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, the Western language has messed it up to make it like good, better, best. But good is the best you can get because good is complete. Yeah. This is why God, when he finished creation, he didn't say it's great. No. He said it is what? Good. good. Mm -hmm. So the steps of a good man or a man that is coming into completion are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Everything God does is pro. Man, I'm telling you, if you really want to be have a blessing, one of those nights that you're saying, hey, I just want to do a little Bible study on my own, look up all the pro that God talks about. God is not going backwards. No, no. God is pro. Progressive, yeah. Progressive. We don't need a revival like 1967. We need a move now for now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, but we're growing. We're moving into him. Amen. Amen. So everything God does is pro. Process. Progress. <laughs> Professy. Professy. <laughs> Promess. Promise. Promise. Protect. Mm -hmm. You can come up with all kinds. Amen. He surrounded you with pro. <laughs> <laughs> We're pros. We're pros. We're pros. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we literally are. And you know what? Are you ready for this? This is why I, you're the advanced group, right? Yes. I can tell you this. This is why we profess. Oh. It's our profession. profession. We speak Lord. things that God has said are done before they manifest. Mm -hmm. And it's called faith. 
you have been called, I have been called to be an ambassador. We touched on that last week a little bit. To represent kingdom order. I'm not talking religion or man's traditions. I'm talking about governmental order. The blueprint. I love this when I found out that the Bible is his constitution. <laughs> Ambassadors represent kingdom order as passages through doors. Why does God open doors for you? Mm. It's not just to promote you. There's another word, promote. promote. Mm. It's not just to promote you, but it's to promote his kingdom. Amen. Amen. Once we make it about our ministry or who we are and all that, then we get off. Mm -hmm. It's about advancing the kingdom. Amen. Amen. You know what I notice? People who are truly understanding the kingdom better work together. Mm -hmm. Mm. Have you noticed that? Yeah. But I notice those that are still religious have to keep their own little... And we're all distinct parts. Would you all agree? Yes. Yeah. We're all unique. No, None of us own one another. So we're unique parts. Mm -hmm. He says we're one body but many members. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have our unique assignments. But we work together as one. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yes. So, as ambassadors, you say, "Well, I'm not an ambassador. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just born again. I'm just trying to go to heaven." Or, no, no, no. The moment you got born again, if we can put it that way, you became an ambassador. Literally, a government official representing the King of Kings. When we say ambassador, it doesn't mean one size fits all. <laughs> yeah. We have to, as you see there on your sheet. Ambassadors are activated by process before assigned to their field. Mm -hmm. We've got to be equipped and trained. We've got to have someone who's ready to walk us through the process. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, your current assignment. How many of you are currently doing something? Mm -hmm. Is that everybody yes. in this room? How about you out there? Your current assignment may just be a step in your main purpose. Mm -hmm. Your current assignment may just be a series of assignments mm -hmm. to pro you forward. Each one of us have a God-given mandate. What is a mandate? It's simply a date given to a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. The mandate is literally what you do in your time. It's what God has appointed to you to do in your season, in your time. Amen. Amen. So, we go through stages. And it's important to understand the stages. And I've kind of uh, simpled them down, if you can say that word, simple like that, to four steps. First, we're sheep. And one sheep, always sheep. But, although we're always going to be sheep, then we move into the next level and we become servants. We need to learn how to serve. Then after that level, even though we're always going to be servants, no matter how far you get, you're always going to want to serve. Amen? Mm -hmm. Then we become sons. And we were always sons, as far as God's concerned, but we're just realizing sonship. So we become sons, and then after that, while we'll always be sons, God brings us into becoming saints. And, you know, I know the Catholics say you've got to do two miracles to become a saint, <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to leave the miracles to God. And he said he calls us saints in his word. Yeah. So let me look at this with you a little bit. Sheep need a covering. Now, even when you're in the saint stage... You're still going to need a covering. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when I say these things, don't think I'm just saying one let go of another. Because we still need it. But I'm talking about the activation of where we are. Mm -hmm. Why? Because sheep are finding out about their righteousness. They're babies. Amen. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're finding out how they're clean through the word of God. Mm -hmm. So there's a dependency. 
Sheep are dependent. Mm -hmm. So that's where we started. But you can't stay there. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is presenting something to us and it's called grow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amen. Get off the bomb <laughs> because then at some point you can't have everybody feeding you all the time and you can't have everybody doing everything for you. Now you've got to serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I meet a lot of young men and women who just say, I want to skip all this uh, baby and, and servant stage. Man, I, I got a ministry anointing on me. I got I to gotta get out there and win the world. But it doesn't take you long out there and you're poking out at underwear, spiritually speaking, to decide maybe I need to get with some training. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? I've seen too many people nosedive because they thought their process ought to be sped up. The servant is about instruction time. They learn how to do things. Mm -hmm. It's about in developing integrity and character. We're going to cover that some more in the weeks to come. Are y'all excited? Yes. Yes. It's about finding your anointing. It's about gifts. And, and it's really, if you want to wrap it up, it's about identity. Right. We need to not skip this. <laughs> this is where your passion will begin to show up. Yes. You'll begin to say, I don't know why, but I like doing this. <laughs> and, and I like, you know, understanding how to serve. The more you serve someone else's vision, God will begin to introduce you to yours. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, God isn't into secondhand visions, mm. but if you honor someone else's vision, yes. he will give you yours. Yes. Yes. Mm. Amen. Amen. So, then we come out of sonship, and we're always going to be in sonship, but we come into sainthood. Saints, because now we had covering, instruction, and training. But now, it's guidance. There came a time when my kids didn't need me instructing or training them all the time. They're all grown right now. Mm -hmm. But they do come for guidance. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now write this down. The more you release someone when it's time, the more you release someone to discover what God has put in them, the more they'll come back. The more you release someone when it's time to move into discovery for themselves, mm -hmm. the more they'll come back for guidance. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the more you hold on to them and refuse to release them, and continue to try to put them under your thumb when it's time to be released, mm -hmm. they will leave you. Mm -hmm. Saint equals guidance, authority, activation. In other words, are you ready for this? Empowerment. There was a time for dependency. There was a time for identity. There was a time for equipping. But there's got to be a time for empowering. And I'm telling you, this school, this new Destiny Group Mentor School, I pray will be a compliment to the churches and the colleges that we can help. Amen. That we can we can cooperate together, co-labor together to help people be released the way they should be. First Peter chapter two and verse five and nine reveals our ambassadorial protocol for revealing our place. You have a place in your purpose, in your mandate. The place is described as position. And we think of position in some way as titles. Mm -hmm. But position and titles are not always synonymous. They are not. Position will show up before your title does. If your title shows up before your position, you're out of protocol. What do you mean by that, Dr. Rick? He says in Ephesians 2.6, we've been made to sit together. Sit means set. We've been set together in heavenly places. 
or positions. We have a place, we have a position that God is forming us into. And position comes before titles. Don't rush a title. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because the title does not really describe you. It just describes what you're supposed to be doing. Place equals position. We've been set in heavenly positions. And position comes before titles. Now, the reason why I say this, because I, I want to bring us to this point for tonight. God is forming your mantle. Do you receive that? Mm -hmm. God is forming your mantle. What is a mantle? It's your stature. It's not what you do to make up yourself. It's what God is forming you to become. God is forming your mantle to advance his kingdom, not yours. Here is the protocol. I'm going to give you one example of protocol before we wrap up tonight. Are you all ready? Yes. Here is clear as clear as can be. First, in verse 5 of 1 Peter chapter 2, it says that we first are a holy priesthood. We're holy before we're royal. We're holy before we're royal. Holiness order. is not how you dress outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Holiness is how you dress inside. Mm, yes. We need to know how to be holy before we know how to be royal. Mm. What do you mean by that? Righteousness is holiness. Yes. Whew, this is, man, I Thank love you, this. This is why he says, seek first the kingdom. Yes. But he didn't stop there. But I hear people stop there. And they're seeking the kingdom without his righteousness. Mm -hmm. But he has said, seek first the kingdom, what? And, and his, righteousness. his righteousness or his holiness and all these things shall be added unto you. But he says, look, if you're going to seek the kingdom, seek his constitution and his righteousness. Seek his government. So holy priesthood is simply your undergarments. What, who we are inside is clean. Thank you. Amen. After that verse 5, he says, after you've understood that it's about righteousness first, not your righteousness, that's filthy rags, but my righteousness in you. Now you are ready to be suited in royalty. Ha mm -hmm. <laughs> ha! Mm -hmm. Amen. So, he says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And a peculiar people. And we we sing about that and we've 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 just shouted about that and, and maybe sometimes we've understood, but I, I'm almost convinced we haven't seen that that's process. That's not just a list. Amen. That's a process. And guess what? Sometimes you have to read some scriptures backwards. Because God starts with the end product and showing you what it will be and then takes you back to see the process. So look at this. Recognizing I'm a peculiar people or purchased people or unique people called out to purpose, then I become a holy nation. I understand it's a governmental citizenship. I'm peculiarly part of a nation called the kingdom of God, a country. Now, the more I recognize I'm a holy nation, I become a royal priesthood. Oh, yes. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now we're talking robes. 
Only not just outwardly. We're talking, thank God, if we can put outward robes on, but, but we're talking inward robes of royalty. Why? Because I see that I have purpose. I see God's called me to be holy. Now I'm a royal priesthood. That means I'm an administrator of the king's principles. And that causes me to become a chosen generation. That chosen generation regenerates people. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Amen? Amen? Can we just shout one time in this yes. place? Amen. Amen. <laughs> see what I'm saying? It's not that you read it backwards, but you see what God was talking about as he ended on where he starts. <laughs> God always sees you perfect. Amen. 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 You're the only one that doesn't. He sees you perfect and then he takes you back to develop it. And you just saw kingdom protocol right here in in First uh, Peter chapter 2. What is the result? He's called me out of ignorance or darkness into his marvelous light. And the marvelous simply means relevant. Light. The revelation bringing renovation, mm. starting with me. Mm -hmm. I want him to renovate me. Yes, thank you. Amen. 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 Let me say this to you because this is where we'll pick up next week as the Lord leads. Are you all visionaries in this room? Yes. Are you pro? Yes. We're pro. Like Amen. Daddy. Are you in yes. process? Yes. 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 <laughs> then as a visionary, what is the vision? It's not your... Who or your what? It's your why. Your why. Kingdom visionary sees history before it happens. <laughs> because it's already done. Mm. God's called it done. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you decide whether or not you want to manifest it. Now we go from visionary to entrepreneur. Ha mm -hmm. <laughs> ha! Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. A kingdom entrepreneur enters, the word preneur means premieres, mm. the prize before anyone else sees it. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> before we started this school, it was in my heart. Yes. And then a kingdom innovator yes. Yes, so. goes in mm. and ovates mm. <laughs> to change dimensions and reveal what others couldn't find. Mm. You are a visionary. I declare to you tonight on behalf of our king. Do you receive it? Yes. You're a visionary. You're an entrepreneur. And you are an innovator of something. Yeah. Hallelujah. So that's the protocol of purpose and vision. Yes.